Hey, I'm Dave, and this is Braden from Robo. Braden, thanks for coming down and visiting us at Matter Hackers. You're, you're located in San Diego, which is actually only like an hour drive from us. So right down the road. Easy. Lots of traffic, but I got here safely, so that's good. Welcome to Southern California. <laughs> thanks thanks for joining us, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I wanted to chat a little bit about the R2, which is your new machine. But even more than that, like tell Robo's story because I think it's really awesome. We, uh, you know, Matter Hackers and Robo have worked together for like three or four years now, yeah. from you guys from the beginning, us from the beginning, uh, through materials and machines and matter we've control. Seen, we've seen each other start from a really small place <laughs> yeah. and kind of start growing together. So it's been cool to see your guys' journey. Yeah. Um, you guys have seen our journey from a very small little yeah. office. I mean, our first. I think we met you when we were just coming out of the garage. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. literally, you are one of the founders with Kobe, right? Yes. So Kobe's yes. one of your partners. Yep. I'll tell my version of the story, and you yeah. interrupt me. <laughs> I start getting it wrong, right? right. Don't say. Let me sign up for this. Let's hear it. Um, so from what I know, you guys started building like literally a Prusa in the garage, and then you built that like awesome looking frame um, for the R1. Did a Kickstarter, which was hugely successful. Yeah. Fulfilling Kickstarters is like a whole story in its own that you kind of learn the process that was a that was a journey yep, in yeah itself. So, so how did you and Kobe learn like or figure out what 3d printing was and then start in the garage like where that seed of an idea come from yeah so Kobe definitely was sort of the one that sparked the idea so his senior design project and one of his mechanical engineering classes was to build a 3d prosthetic leg using an industrial 3d printer as a right. hundred thousand dollar machine yeah. uh, Hard to get access to, we only have one at our university, so for him, he set out to sort of build his own small machine. We can do this on our own. his project, okay. yeah. And from there, it spawned into me hearing about 3D printing. You know, I, I knew about it quite a bit because I had spent money on a previous company to get prototypes made mm -hmm. using a 3D printer. And when he started talking about building his own, I was fascinated and I was like, yeah. let's do this. So I did yeah. not know this was possible. You're saying we can do what in our own garage? Yeah, we just started. We started researching it online. We uh, started joining forums. Yeah. We started doing everything we could to figure out how the technology works, how to build it. And this was in 20. This is 2012. 12, right? Yeah, mid 2012. Yeah. Okay. So it took us about six months to kind of get our first idea together. Yeah. And this was before like real machines could be purchased even. Like the MakerBot Cupcake was just yeah. starting yeah. to be a thing around that time. Yeah. Uh, that's like right when Matterhack was starting to get our gears yeah. running as well. Yeah, Printerball uh, was just coming around. They just yep. they had just done a Kickstarter about uh, three or four months before that. Yeah, and so it was just an exciting time for us. We knew the industry was you yep. know going to explode, and uh, we we honestly just loved the the product itself. We loved three D printing. Yep. We loved that it could help people build ideas. Yeah, we had like an idea of where the future would go with it. And we're like, okay, let's build our own machine that we can release to the public at an yeah. affordable price point because the ones that are out on the market at that time were in the thousands of dollars. Yeah. So we built our R1 literally on a round dining room table in San Diego, <laughs> California. Uh, we filmed the funniest, most homegrown video you've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, to the point where, if you can just picture me doing this, we're literally sitting under a bar stool, one that spins, and we're trying to get one of those 360 product yeah. shots, and I'm literally sitting there, like slowly turning it while Kobe's above with the camera, trying to get this perfect angle. And you know, we launched this video. It's really a homegrown video on Kickstarter. Had no idea it was going to be successful, and ended up, you know, I guess pre-selling if you want to call it that. Yeah. 1100 machines. So yeah, whatever it takes to get all the job done. I remember that video because there was like literally shots of like you and Kobe in the in the garage, like bending the uh, like plywood to make that little arc on the machine, on the like the cover of the R1. It, our first unit was, yeah, the first Scrappy. prototype was made out of wood. I mean, that's yeah. how we got it all together. And when we got it working, it started printing parts to make it better. And yeah. It's just yeah. sort of built itself. And yeah, we just, we couldn't believe the reception we got on Kickstarter. So it was yeah, pretty amazing. so good. And then obviously after Kickstarter ended, we're like, oh, crap, we have to make lots of units now. <laughs> and so spent yeah, quite a bit of time good. overseas. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it took us a lot longer than we thought to actually get all the units out. But yeah, how long did it, took? like, it was a couple months, like almost a year even, right? So we said three months. Three months. We were going to deliver to everyone. Everyone that, uh, you know, pre-bought on Kickstarter. It ended up taking us close to a year cool. to get them all out. But yeah. 
Uh, you, you guys got over that hump, and I actually love the story of yeah. like, because so many 3D printers that have been kickstarted have like died after their kickstarted. Yeah. And you guys are now launching the R2, which means you've been over that hump, you've been through the forest, you've been, and you actually yeah. like did it to yourself again with the R2. Like, tell me, like, why, what was the reasoning for like, oh, let's do this again? That was a nightmare. Let's do it again on the R2. So it, honestly, it was nothing more than the fact that. Kickstarter was part of why we're a business today. Yeah. I mean, it holds yeah. true to our story. Like, without Kickstarter, we wouldn't have this company. We wouldn't be, you know, selling machines to yeah. people all over the world that's benefiting them in numerous different ways. So, for us, it was like, it's like a tribute to go yeah. back to Kickstarter, yeah. where it all started, and relaunch these machines. Um, and I know a lot of people have been, like, asking why we go back to Kickstarter, sure. we have funding, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But, uh, yeah, it was nothing more than that. It was just me and Kobe sat down, and we're like, we have to do Kickstarter. Yeah. It's like... The reason we're here yeah, today. Yeah. So it's very important for us. It's to like that. giving back to the initial like community that. that yeah, we did a huge discount on the R2, uh, yeah. 500 bucks off what the unit is now. So a lot of people got it at a good discount, and I think everyone was just excited about it in that point. So. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that that story like comes full circle. Yeah. And you guys are able to tell us. Yeah, it's definitely it's exciting. We've been working on these new machines for you know two and a half years now. It's been five, yeah. six different iterations of yeah. it. And to finally have them out in the market yeah. and launching them and people getting them and using them successfully is just yeah. a super cool feeling. So Yeah, because we saw the first R2 at CES two, two years ago. Yeah, we prematurely started yeah. showing the R2 to everyone. And, uh, you know, we learned from our mistake on that yeah. one. But that's all part of the story of, like, like literally how you end up where you are yeah. is, is you try these things and... This machine, amongst like most of the machines we see, and we see a lot of machines, yeah, we yeah, decline yeah. testing so many machines just because yeah. we know that they don't have the juice or the technology or the reliability yeah. that like for us to even consider selling them. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this thing has been through so many iterations, it's honestly one of the most polished, like good looking Thanks, and yeah. robust machines that we've used. And that makes it a really great product yeah. and something that we know we can say like, ah, yes, are you yeah, yeah. gonna love this thing I mean, as well? We were scrappy with this machine, I mean, ever since we started building it. We knew we wanted to build a smarter, more well-done machine that has, you know, the touchscreen on it, just a better access and ease yeah. of use. So this is kind of where we started, this was our foundation. Yeah. And then it morphed into like, let's add this, let's add this, let's add this. You always want to add everything into the actual machine yeah. that you're building. Uh, but honestly, our wish list of features, we made every single one of them onto this machine. Yeah. And yeah. we're working on the dual extruder upgrade right now, yeah. so that, will like really round this entire machine out. We're just, yeah. we're so happy with how it turned out. Yeah. And we like, Matter Hackers, from our perspective, like we listen to what you guys say as marketing, but we always take that information in, yeah. we test the machine ourselves, and then we re-market it to yeah. our own users of like, here's why you should buy it. And honestly, this machine, for its price point, like how much it is, and how many features that it does check yeah. off the box, it's, yeah. it's amongst the best value that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're constantly, we're continuing to do additional yeah. things to it as well. Like I said, the dual extruder upgrade, lots of software stuff happening right now that yeah. we're still working on. Um, in the app, we're integrating like our uh, my mini factory and a Thingiverse. So you're gonna be able to do a lot with the product as you can just grabbing yeah. designs as far to the end point of yeah. on the printer as you can. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. And how long has the app been in development? Like, tell me, tell me about the app because that's pretty cool. Not a yeah. lot of apps exist. Yeah, we've been in development on the app for probably close to a year now. Um, you know, it started out. Let's develop an app that you can just 3D print directly from. Now it's kind of morphing into like a model marketplace that you can 3D yeah. print from. Um, so we want you to be able to literally go on your app, look at models that you want to print, just download them and send them to your cool. machine. And this so, machine's there? Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, you can do all, all the printing from it now. The Thingiverse and my mini factory marketplaces are being integrated into it now. Nice. So you go to browse models and download them nice. and print them. But right now you can save them to your cloud library, yeah. either Google Drive or Dropbox, and you can send them to the machine over Wi Fi. Cool. Yeah, so that's awesome. yeah, it's a cool app. It's fun. And, you know, the onboard slicing is one of the things that, you know, being able to have that on the actual machine is a huge So it's doing them. the slicing, there's like a uh, Pi in yeah. there, something yeah. that's got some gigabytes of memory that's allowed to do the processing. Exactly, stuff. yeah. Cool. So if so people just, just want to quickly, you know, if they download something on Thingiverse and SEO yeah. file and just want to plug it in and print yeah. that, they yeah. go through a few steps and they can just send it directly to the machine yeah. and they'll print. Yeah, so. it might not take like huge files and process, well, it will process, it'll just take time. It'll take a lot longer, um, yeah. But most, 90% of the files that people are printing, I yeah. will do yeah. turn those along. Yeah. And we've succeeded with it, we've been able to use that, so that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Cool, that. yeah. It's, I'm so excited. Our engineering team is amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have a small team, you know, and yeah. they're pulling off miracles with this product, and I'm just proud of where it's yeah. gotten to at yeah. this point. And honestly, like, 
thinking about it, I have to rub my eyes every once in a while because like thinking about it four it's and a half years ago we started, yeah. I'm like, wow, I can't believe we've made it to this point where we have these two new products side by side that are competing with some of the biggest companies in the industry sure. right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really cool. When you look back to the R1 and like, let's just say the first version of the R1, yeah. and not even the Plus, because yeah. there are plenty of improvements <laughs> on the Plus, and then you guys, uh, the, one of the things I love about the R1 is that you were always iterating. Yeah. Like, machine number one and machine number 10 shipped sort of different, but yeah. 10 was way better, yeah. and you had these like backwards upgradable features and stuff. Compared to this, what's your initial reaction of like, if we threw an R1 up on this table, what, you'd be like, what, was, what would your feelings be? I, I am in love with the R1 in yeah. just such a different way because the R1 was literally like an iteration. This is why I love this industry, yeah. is because people are so willing to share everything, whether it's their, their designs, whether it's their yeah. ideas. And the R1 like went through a bunch of different iterations just from our customers using mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So they gave us tons of great ideas. We have some amazing customers out there that are using yeah. the product and like giving us feedback. Yeah. Your forums so, are really good. Yeah. yeah, and so we just kept changing it. We kept making it better, improving it, and then it morphed into the R1 Plus just to show that like, it's like a step up from yeah. the original R1. Yeah. Uh, but you know, sitting here, it's just, it's a different feeling. This one, like, I'm like, you know, it's, it's all polished and it looks amazing and it works amazing and lots of great features. And this is sort of like the maker built it all. <laughs> like, this is why we're here, machine. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I love that product. And you guys are making the R2 in a factory that's very capable. Yes. My so, understanding. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah, we started the manufacturer we had for the R1. We were building them up at the right. same time. We were, you know, yeah. starting and building our company. So it, we went through growing pains with them. With the new manufacturer we have for the R2 and the C2, they're going to be able to scale it yeah, up. Yeah, they're so. killing it. Yeah, so it'll be exciting to see nice. that. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so I'm excited. I went down to, to China a few times and visited yeah. the factory <laughs> and got to work with you them. You've already been like, you know, half living there right, yeah. for the last couple months. Yeah, back and forth, checking out the assembly, yeah. making sure the processes are all in place. And cool. I mean, it's running smooth. Yeah, it's a machine now. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, and I, I I know one of your engineers, Alan. Like the moment he really was able to sink his teeth into the R2, yeah. that thing just I you know I I followed the whole design and process of the R2 from the beginning, and once he was able to get all of that, that was, that was yeah. he did some good work. We need to cover a story just on our engineering team alone. <laughs> yeah, because we need Alan up here. <laughs> I I can't tell you how much like amazing work they did with such a small team yeah. I mean, it was just incredible to get it to where it is now yeah. um you know they worked their tails off and i i our whole company couldn't be here without those guys without the other people on you know the different areas of the business and i just i love my team we have a good team and you know, that's continuing awesome. to grow this so cool yeah so the other cool thing about robo is i hear you guys had some like investments and that's really awesome that like a tiny company is able to get some money and allows you guys to help do what you're doing but uh anything you want to say about that yeah you know we really we bootstrapped this business from day yeah. one i mean we spent i mean just getting the company started we only spent about a thousand bucks to yeah. then get the kickstarter going to raise the money and then we raised more money just to pay for inventory so we did inventory financing so just really really kept it small, bootstrapped it, grew it, and then we got to a point where we we're trying to build these new products and we needed additional funding. So we had a group of guys that were working in some management positions that were Australian, yep. and they knew an Australian company that did venture capital funding, yep. and so we got some, and they were ran, you know, or basically worked with a really famous entrepreneur out there. So we worked with them, we got the initial funding, and then we needed additional money to actually to bring these to finally bring these to market. Yeah. Yeah, uh, bring these to market and then grow the business. So we went and did this reverse merger um, with a company that was called Falcon Minerals that was basically just a shell company that was on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, so renamed it Robo3D Inc. Robo3D Inc's on the Stock Exchange, yep. small board of directors. The whole operation is still done <laughs> in San Diego. Robo 3D Inc. is still the same group. Yeah. If not, we've just added additional people. Um, a lot of people always ask us, you know, are we getting away from the open source, things like that, or are we turning into, like, uh, yeah. you know, sort of what other companies in the industry have done? Yeah, there's other use cases out there where this is, like, turns not so great for the community. Yeah. And uh, I think you, from what I've seen, from what Matter Access has seen with Robo, yeah. you guys are very protective with that. You guys, you know, Kobe and Braden, are, you guys are still there making the decisions, yeah. doing the engineering products at a more accelerated rate yeah. essentially yeah. so and that yeah that was our ultimate goal of raising the money and we came to that point we had to make some tough decisions and you know that's how business is you gotta make those decisions at the end of the day but yeah. we knew we were on a mission to bring new and you know cool products in the industry and uh, there's a lot more we want to do and so raising that money was yeah. important for us. So. do you think the community in general 
uh, especially Robo fans, will benefit from this? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, we have, you know, more products in the pipeline that we're excited about. This machine, you know, we're still staying true to all the open source stuff. You know, we're not forcing you to buy our material or anything like that. There's lots of open yeah, source Yeah, it's open material. So. You guys are probably soon going to publish the files for yep, it. Yeah, so, so lots of open stuff going on the machines. And then, you know, obviously it's going to give us some runway to build new products in the future that everyone should be excited about. Well, that's really great. I love, yeah. I, love, you know, I love so much of the Robo story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You guys are on the yeah. Australian Stock Exchange. I know, it's crazy. Awesome. It is crazy, you know, like, people always ask, like, if I can go back, would I do it again? You know, I can't make that decision right now because we went down this road and we came to a fork in, in the road where we said, hey, we're going to go this way, we're going to go this way. You know, this way will give us access to funding, continue to build products. This way we might fall. Yeah, and so yeah. we went the, the road to keep this thing going and to keep our employees and uh, to really add additional employees. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.